make a pit stop for all things NASCAR with the Four Tire Change Podcast. Here is your host, Dawson Iserlow. Welcome back into Four Tire Change. Dawson Iserlow here with ESPN Southwest Louisiana. New time, new date here to release the podcast. Going to start doing these on Mondays just so that it's more of kind of an instant reaction to the race that we're seeing on Sunday um, as opposed to wait until later in the week. I think it's going to be a little bit better for the flow. And it also gives me the opportunity if uh, I'm able to get a guest on that week or if I want to do something different that's not just about the race, I can do an extra episode later in the week. So that'll be the new plan going forward. Hope everybody's cool with that. Still uh, continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Really appreciate the support we've been getting on these. So let's talk about Martinsville. You know, there was a large stretch of yesterday where I was uh, really upset with, with the racing quality. And, um, you know, I, I, I texted a few friends and said, like, is this the worst Martinsville race we've ever seen? Like, I... I just wasn't really expecting that much stagnant racing throughout the pack, I guess. You know, just nobody able to get around anyone. Felt like they were getting in a straight line. Felt like an old school, you know, super speedway race where everybody just lined up and, and just stayed out of harm's way for a while. And, and I know that wasn't the plan there. And, and there was some racing throughout the pack. It, it wasn't all like that. But at the front, it was. And, and so that was really concerning. Look, it got a little bit better later on, and, um, you know, that hopefully saved this race in some ways uh, from being completely, you know, a snooze fest. And, and at the end, of course, we get a green-white checkered, and, and we get some things that make this uh, interesting, but they weren't necessarily organically interesting, right? This wasn't just somebody chasing the leader down and, and making it a great race that way. So uh, I don't have a ton to say about it, to be honest with you. Now, look, th there was a great storyline going into the weekend, Hendrick celebrating their 40th anniversary. They did a nice job on the broadcast, obviously talking with a lot of the employees and, and going up there and showing all the support they had. I think 1,500 employees, um, you know, just members of the organization that they were able to bring out, uh, family members of the organization as well. And, um, you know, look, that was a really nice storyline. And obviously, they get their storybook ending. They finish one, two, three here. The winner of the race is William Byron. It's his third win of the season. You know, look, I wrote a column about Byron emerging as a real superstar in this sport after he won the 500. And, um, you know, so far that, that that's aging pretty well, right? That take is, is working out for me. I just think he's a guy who's starting to show it. And here's another example, doing it at every different type of track. We've already seen him win at Daytona, right? Now we see him win at Martinsville this year. Like he is, uh, he's really starting to put it together, not to mention his ability on intermediates and road courses as well. So, uh, Byron gets the win and, and Hendrick gets their kind of storybook here with with all the uh, you know the extra stuff that was going on you know, there was different parts parts of this race where it looked like Kyle Larson was going to dominate things then it looked like Logano who stayed out on two tires I think that's what also made me concerned about the racing like Logano stayed out there he had two tires that had like 150 175 laps of wear on them and it just wasn't affecting him all that much it finally at the very end of the stage caught up to him and he lost some spots but I just don't know if they want the tire wear to be that non that much of a non-factor. I know they don't want it to be Bristol where everything's falling apart, um, but there's a happy balance, I think, and I didn't think we saw that yesterday. Although, weirdly, in the second half of the race, and look, maybe it's just about the rubber that was getting put down and, and everything else about the track changing throughout the day, but later on in the race, it felt like we got some of that. And, and so, look, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it, but regardless... Um, I don't think Logano should have been able to keep the lead as long as he did with, you know, more than 150 laps on his right side tires, so, uh, or his left side tires, regardless. Uh, the whole the whole idea there, um, you know, I, I just think some of that stuff was was unfortunate, and it, and it messed with the racing, and Martinsville, look, it just is not what it was, and, and I know they're trying in the short track package. By the way, we said after Martinsville we'd have, you know, the ability to kind of talk about the package. I'm not a big fan. I, I don't think they did much. I don't know if they made it worse, you know, Denny Hamlin... Uh, had some comments, or maybe it was Kyle Busch who suggested that things haven't even gotten better. They've gotten worse at the short tracks. Um, I, I, it certainly hasn't gotten much better if it's gotten any better at all. So that's unfortunate. I know they're, they're continuing to take a swing at this. And look, we had Bob Pockers on this show, and he said, you know, look, they're, they're, they're trying. They're taking a big swing at it, but what are the, what are the likelihoods that they connect? Uh, not great. And, and he said that back in the offseason still when we were previewing. So I understand all that, and it's difficult, and you know you don't want to mess with the entire balance of the car because you have what you have going on the intermediates right now. But man, we better get some really good intermediate races coming up here, right? Like that's that's my only thought because it just hasn't been good at the short tracks. And I, you know, I thought Richmond was okay, I thought Martinsville was okay, but neither one of them were very good. Um, at the end there, by the way, I, I thought they did a nice job, mostly keeping it clean on the green white checkers. They've been good about that this year. It hasn't been it hasn't become a wreck fest late, which is entertaining in some regards, but um, obviously. If you're kind of trying to protect the uh, sanctity of who's winning this race based on who deserved to win it, I think 
mostly we've gotten pretty deserving winners. Um, you know, and, and look, maybe it helped that a bunch of Hendrick cars were at the front yesterday, so they weren't going to you know go overboard. Chase, you know, look, Chase Elliott drove it in there, and he gave himself a shot against Byron. So I credit him for that, and he did it while pretty much staying clean, and ultimately it didn't work out for him. He actually fell back to third because Larson was able to pass him. But, um, you know, look, there's a new points leader. Uh, Kyle Larson will take over for now as he he passes up Martin Truex Jr., who had a, a mediocre day, ended up finishing middle of the pack, I think around 18th. So um, Larson continues to be consistent. We know he's going to be a factor all year. The only other big shakeup in the point standings that I thought was worth mentioning is actually Chase Briscoe enters the playoffs at number 16. So kind of quietly, look, we, we've talked a lot about Stuart Haas and their shortcomings and how big a year this was for them. And look, they've mostly answered it. And, and outside of a 35-point penalty to a couple of their drivers, which was obviously unfortunate, um, they'd be running, you know, overall much better than last year. Not great. They don't have Kevin Harvick anymore, and so we knew that was the big issue. But if Briscoe's able to get up there and, and kind of come, you know, get comfortably in the playoffs, that would be massive for them. Um, he passed Daniel Suarez. Now, I, I guess I do have to say he's not technically in the playoffs as of this moment because there's a car that's in 16th, and he is technically not in because of the win. But um, I do think, you know, with Suarez below him, he, he's right on the line, and that's important for Stuart Haas. They need that, so... Um, that is solid, and we'll see if they're able to continue it. You know, overall, we're at a point where, again, we've got a lot of the favorites up there, and, and that's one takeaway I had with this Martinsville race. You know, look, we talked with Matt Miguez last week, and he kind of said he loved that the uh, the short tracks with the next-gen car kind of felt like an equalizer to him. Well, it's not really the case anymore, it feels like, because what did we have yesterday? A bunch of Hendrick cars running one, two, three. A bunch of Gibbs cars right behind them. The power teams are dominating this season, and, you know, that feels like that's back where we are. Now, there's plenty of time for that to change, um, I liked all the parody, but, it, you know, we haven't really had a weekend where you go, man, look at Corey LaJoy running top five, or look at Michael McDowell up there in, in the top ten, you know. There's been moments of it, and especially the drafting tracks, but again, you know, that's to be expected, so I don't know if that surprises us. Um, there just hasn't been a lot of that this year, you know, and, 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 and teams are feeling like they're settling in a little bit. And I think the Hendrick and the Gibbs notes where they were able to take a couple of years of data and say, hey, let's figure this thing out, feels like they might be figuring it out. And that leads us to next week's race, which will be Texas Motor Speedway, the much maligned Texas Motor Speedway. Look, it's been really rough for Texas for a while now as far as the quality of racing. Um, you know, it's not everyone's favorite track. I will hold out hope, but I don't expect a ton, you know, and, and this is an intermediate. So this is where this, this next gen car package shines. So if Texas can't figure it out, I don't know what the future Texas is. I, I don't know what the deal is there. And, we, we, you know, there's a lot to get into that. Obviously, um, they have a big time company behind them in, in Speedway Motorsports that's not just going to let this go away. So they've got to figure something out. Hopefully we get better racing this weekend. And uh, if that's the case, I'll be all for it. You know, as far as who I like this week, you know, look, I went out on a limb last week, picked Eric Jones and Jones ran top 15, got to the top 10 for a bit. Um, didn't really ever have a chance to challenge for the win the way I picked. Um, but I'm going to go back to some more chalk this week because that's just, that feels like where we are on the intermediates, right? And and uh, that's that's the point in the season that we are, where, where the guys who are up there are starting to show you why they're always up there. And so for that reason, um, you know, give me at least a guy who hasn't won this year. I'll take Martin Truex Jr. And, and, and Truex has been so good a couple of different times. You know, is it his necessarily best style of track? I'm not sure. I kind of like him more at the shorter tracks. But I do think Truex has a great opportunity to keep the momentum rolling here. And I think Gibbs showing you so much speed every single week. So that'll continue um, in my opinion, uh, when we go to Texas. It will be interesting to see the qualifying. Look, get back on intermediate, see how these things go. It's a tough portion of the schedule now that the short tracks haven't been entertaining again, at least in my opinion, where you've been all these short tracks. Now you go to Texas, you go, oh, man, can we just get to the kind of that halfway point in the season where we kind of have some resets and, 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 and the schedule changes a bit? We're almost there. But for now, we got Texas, and hopefully it gives us a little bit better racing than we are expecting. So that'll do it. New time here on a Monday. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, we'll have a lot more coverage and content here as we go, and uh, hopefully you keep listening to Four Tire Change. Appreciate everybody.